Okay, I'm back. I'm so sorry about that. Um, tell me you can't see down here because I'm telling you, I promise you, I ain't got no panties on. And this is just a shirt, just a blouse. So we can't see no lower than here. Now, back to where we left off, guys. I am so sorry for the interruption. That was uh, my doctor calling me, actually, um, to check on me to make sure I'm okay, which is wonderful because I am. Um, okay. So, where was I? I think, I think I was talking about... I told you about the turmeric, right? I told you about the um, benefits of it. I told you about the... Um, it's great for in, anti. It's a great anti-inflammatory um, natural root as well. Um, I told you that it it's great for people that are diabetic. Uh, oh, and turmeric is also great, very good for depression for people that are suffering from depression or living with depression. I don't like to say the word suffering. Subscribe and like. Hit the subscribe button. I need those subscribe those subscriptions so we guys, you know, we can go live and really like talk to each other. You know, we can talk face to face. So, but I got to get those numbers for you guys because you guys, I need to talk to you and give you information. So please hit the subscribe and the like. Now, let me finish because, like I said. On my Facebook page, I also post almost all the time what I'm eating, um, the, 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 the health benefits of things that I eat. People aren't paying attention, and that is a problem. Because then you want to call me later on, and you're asking me. And uh, several people have done it. When clearly you're a Facebook friend of mine, and all you need to do is pay attention. Pay attention. This is just, I'm not posting this stuff for me because I know how to take care of me. I know how to take care of me. I'm doing this for you guys because I don't have to because I'm doing it because I want everybody to eat healthy. So pay attention to what I'm posting. Then you'll know. Educate yourselves. The more you know, the smarter you are. Now, those of own, that's for the people who aren't paying attention. That's not for you guys over here on YouTube. Um, that's for the people on Facebook page. My Facebook page is um, KK, K-A-Y, K-A-Y. Um, Brassfield, B R A double S F I E L D. Brassfield, K K Brassfield. That's me. All right, so let's get back to the seriousness. Don't take my quirkiness as um, foolery because I'm a very smart woman and I love helping people. So let's get to it again. Um, uh, berries. That's another thing. Berries are great for, it's a great um, natural anti, um, oh God, antioxidants. Yeah. So you definitely, your body needs antioxidants. So it's a natural way. So you can do blackberries, blueberries, strawberries. Berries are wonderful. Mangoes, mangoes boost your immune system. You got your vitamin C, just like oranges do as well. Make people don't know that mangoes is also vitamin C. Hello. Yeah. I eat them all the time. I have them in the fridge and I drink them every morning with my smoothies that I make. I make a kale smoothie every day, sometimes twice a day. And I put mangoes in them. Um, it clears your skin. Mangoes are good for clearing your skin. So is, um, sorry, let's go back to turmeric again. Turmeric is amazing for the skin. That right there did something really big. The combination between the mango and the turmeric did something really wonderful for my skin because as you can see my skin, it's pretty flawless, but the turmeric, I've always had pretty decent skin, but the turmeric, oh my God, because I had some, some blemishes and stuff and some things going on, and even without makeup, with no makeup, my skin is still really good. Besides the dark circles, my skin is still really good, especially for a woman of my age, which is a particular age. Thank you. Now. Berries, they clear the skin. Um, they're great for, um, the mangoes are great for weight loss. Um, it boosts your immune system. How good is that? We need our immune systems to be really strong to fight off this corona shit and any other flu-like viruses that are coming our way right now, right? 
So I'm sharing this with you guys. Pay attention, please. Start feeding yourself healthier. Get oatmeal. It lowers the cholesterol. Um, yeah. So, and the mangoes are great, a great source of fiber. You know what I mean? You need fiber in your body. It keeps you regular, even when you're younger. If you're not getting a good two poops every day, emptying your bowels, something is wrong with your system. You're, you're pretty clogged up. Mm -hmm. You are what you eat, baby. So if you eat good, you eat clean. When you go to the bathroom, your poop doesn't really stink. Mine don't. Mine just smells like, I don't know, nothing. It's like vegetables mostly. That's it. But anyway, so, yeah. Um, that's that for as far as my health tips, guys. And we were interrupted earlier. So, um, the other stuff that I wanted to talk to you guys about. I'm going to shift this a little bit. Please forgive me for shifting it. But I have to. So... I disappeared from here for a while because, you know, I'm, I'm a person who don't like to internalize my feelings. I like to share them, but when I have something going on with me, those are the feelings that I do internalize. Those are the feelings that I do keep private into myself or if I'm angry. I don't like to be on the internet or on the phone talking to someone if I'm in a bitter, not a bitter, but a, 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 a moody mood. Like, I don't want to be, I don't want to talk to people because I don't want to, like, put that anger or negativity off on someone else, so I keep it to myself. I internalize it. I sit in it. I sit in whatever that negative feeling is for a minute, and then I come back. And I release it. And I think about all the positive things that are going on with me. All the ways that I can help people. Right? And it just keeps me, it wakes me up and it gets me out of that funk. So, haters. Which brings us to haters. Um, they're real. <laughs> Even during the pandemic. Can you believe that? People are still out here hating on people. This is ridiculous. It's insane. Oh my god. Um... <sighs> Some woman named Adrian. Um, I don't even know her last name because I really didn't pay the bitch too much attention. But she's on my Facebook. Well, she was on my Facebook page before I blocked her. And if she comes over here to YouTube, I'm going to block her here too. Um, for a while, she pretended to be some sort of supporter. Her and other women. Um, you know, uh, uh, an, like an ally or a supporter of people who are LGBT. Um, and I, I kind of bought it because she was always complimenting me. She was always telling me, you know, complimenting my looks and saying, oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, I love your personality. You bring so much joy. And, and I like when I make people feel good. So naturally, I... I, I just absorbed that. Like, you're giving me all these great compliments. So, you're telling me that I'm, I'm making you happy. And that kind of, ple I, I'm a pleaser in a way. So, it made me happy that I'm ha helping someone else not be sad or brighten their day or whatever the case may be. And for a while, I bought into that until I started noticing, you know, um, comments coming at me from her. And then this one particular comment, time just over the weekend she hit me up in my inbox which is something she never does so she hit me up in my inbox and I guess she wanted to get personal I'm not going to get into depth about it long story short I ended up blocking her because I felt what she was going with me the misgendering let me tell you something <laughs> you will quickly be blocked Burned, sent to the incinerator, burned again, and you will not be a phoenix rising from the ashes. You're going to stay burned because guess what? You're going to stay dead to me. I'm done. I'm not going to allow anybody to disrespect me. I'm not going to allow a woman, a man, a child, or anyone to disrespect me and misgender me. It's not going to happen. Now, 
So I've ended up blocking her. So guys, respect. Respect is super important. People are not, I personally am not asking you to accept anything about me because I don't accept everything about you. Remember that. I don't. And I know that you don't accept everything about me. Fair enough? Yeah. So one thing that we both deserve that we should have is respect for just People with that, oh, you got to deserve, you got to earn respect. No. I don't know you. So if I just come in contact with you and we're just getting to know each other, naturally I'm going to show you respect. <sighs> Genius. Naturally you would expect someone to show you respect. Okay? You didn't earn it from me. I just... It's just common decency. That's it. I don't need you to um, accept me. I just need you to respect me like I will respect you. That's it. So that ends that. Um, supermarkets are about to run out of meats. Um, here in New York especially. Um, like a lot of other things. Toilet paper. Yeah, Dee Dee, Diana. Miss Boss Lady, I need some of that stuff. Real talk, girl. So hook your girl up, too, because she just getting real over here in Staten Island for me. Anyway, um, yeah, companies are people that are working for Tyson Chicken in particular, the manufacturers, um, the breeders. Uh, the manufacturers for Tyson Chicken, the, the guys who worked in the factories, and, uh, um, a few of them have tested positive for COVID-19. They've tested positive for COVID-19, and they are no longer working there, so other people are afraid to come to work, um, so they won't be producing meat for us for a while, probably. Hey, you know what? I was about to go vegan anyway, eventually, so <laughs> go ahead, take the meat. I am going to make chicken tonight, though. Um, I just wanted to know how everybody is doing. How is everyone coping with um, being isolated inside, you know, with um, COVID? And if you are infected with COVID or you've been told that you're infected with COVID, stay strong. And um, we're definitely praying for you. We definitely want you to pull through this. Okay. And you will. You will pull through this. I know you will. Okay. So if you tested positive already, don't sweat it relax. If the symptoms don't get any better in three to four days, you go to take to the hospital and you make them take you there. You make them take you seriously. Okay? Um, yeah, just don't sit home and die. You know? Um, but there's another end of that. Don't sit home and panic either. And just because you start coughing or sneezing, you automatically assume you got COVID because some people that have anxiety... can allow it to make you go there and think that, um, yeah, that, you know, um, I, got, I must have COVID. Yeah. I didn't think that, but yeah. Exercising. I also post that on my Facebook page. I'm always exercising. I'm always showing people, um, um, that exercising, letting them know that exercising is really great for your body, especially when you're isolated, when you're in quarantine. You're in such a confined space. You're not getting a lot of activity going on there. I get on that floor and I exercise, baby. And I do whatever I need to do to keep this body right. So when all of this is over with, I'm going to be still sexy. Period. Yeah. Uh, some cities are opening up. I don't know how I don't know what to think about that except for I think it's it's too soon. I was gonna say something else, but I think it's too soon. It's way too soon. Um I think 45 should go and let his family go out there first. If you wanna test, if you wanna open up stuff for people, you wanna make people go back out there and hurry up back out there and um yeah, right away. 
I think what you need to do first is send yourself out there. Let's see you ride the subway to work for a week. And, and if you don't test positive, then I think everyone else can probably go along with you. 45. Check on the people that you love. Check on the pe your parents. Please, please, please consider other people's lives. I went to the supermarket today and I saw a few people in the supermarket with no mask on. Now, they're supposed to, our mayor made it um, so that now you have to have a mask on when you go in the supermarket. Something I've been doing since early, 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 late February. So, yeah. So, um, but yeah, they're supposed to be, it's mandated now that they have to have a mask on. And it's just, people are being stupid. Um, I'm going to say this, and I hope that there is no people that's going to think that this is racist, but for some reason, white people, Caucasian people in the supermarket that I see not wearing masks seem to think that they can't catch COVID or it doesn't affect them because right now it's impacting the black and brown community. It's stupid to think like that um, because if you are asymptomatic, Caucasian person and you're near a person of color you sneeze or cough on them and you're not wearing the mask on your face and uh, let's say you got it in their eyes or droplets in their eyes or um, somehow you're not practicing the guidelines social distancing and all of that and you got them sick you can get them sick easily so what you, especially if the person has some underlying um Illnesses, you know what I'm saying, going on high blood pressure, diabetes, um, some type of surgery from uh, some complications, a weakened immune system, a, a lot of things. You don't know what's going on, so it's always safe to just wear your mask on your face when you're in the supermarket. Wear your freaking mask when you're in public. But if you're not going to wear it when public, at least wear it when you're in a public place, like a store of some sort where there are other people. It's disrespectful. And it's like he's saying, screw you, I'm going to kill you. And it's not only white people doing it. The majority of people here in Staten Island, I can vouch for and I can film it for you, are white people that are not wearing the masks for some reason. All the black people now has gotten, has woke up after thousands and thousands and thousands of our brothers and sisters have died from it. Now they finally waking up. All the Mexicans and all the Puerto Ricans and all the blacks, they're all waking up now. Now everybody's got a mask on their face. Not all of them, though, because the project is right next door. And I still see a few of them not having masks, don't have masks on their face. But I, you, majority of all the white people are definitely not wearing their masks on their face. And I think they're going on this thing um, that it won't happen to them. And I hate to say that, but that's, it's stupid. It's stupid. Because white people are getting infected as well. But here in Staten Island, they believe that it's not going to affect them. So, y'all can take that for whatever it's, you know, you want to take it for. Um, surviving. Surviving this is crucial for us. Surviving this means not to become extinct. Extinct. Hmm. Uh, you know, for our race. You know, we make, what, only 12, 13% of the population? Think about that. You got to be careful. You got to think smart. You got to survive. I survived Katrina. I keep telling y'all that. I survived Katrina. And I don't care what nobody said. Other people that lived through it may not have been traumatized by it, but I was. I was traumatized by it terribly. I was one of the people walking through the water, you know, scrounging for, for food whenever I could find it. Um... It was crazy, you know? And then what happened to me afterwards? <laughs> when I was just trying to... I'm going to tell you what happened. Because I keep saying I'm going to tell you. Let me just tell you this and then I'm going to end this 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 video. Because we're almost at, what, 20 minutes? Okay. So, the day that impacted and changed my life forever is when I went into Rite Aid Pharmacy in Kenner, Louisiana. I was living in Kenner, Louisiana for five, almost six years. 
than Katrina had. When Katrina had, it was me, my Aunt Helen, my handicapped cousin um, that is in a wheelchair. So she's will pay down, down uh, bound, and she can't, you know, she can't do anything for herself. She has cerebral palsy, and yeah, so she she basically can't do anything. Um, so the people, my neighbors across the street, was like, you know, um, you can go to Rite Aid Pharmacy and get some supplies. Now at that time, the mayor, which was I forget the mayor's name, was a good-looking, handsome man in in New Orleans, light-skinned man, gorgeous man. I used to have a crush on this mayor, um, but he's the one who gave permission to um, take some, you know, supplies, survival supplies at the time. Um, during a song, he said it was okay as long as we're not taking things that aren't essential items. So I'm going to follow those guidelines because what the hell am I going to do with anything else? What am I going to do with cash money at this time? What am I going to do with electronics at this time? Maybe a TV, uh, a portable TV, which we already had anyway because my cousin had left a portable television with us that ran by batteries. I used that to keep up with everything that was going on. Um... But the water was up to here. The water was definitely up to it was up, up to here, and me and my aunt would walk through the water. It was it was here definitely, um, which was scary to me because I knew there was alligators in the water. Um, there were people in front of a house going by in a canoe, in canoes, the whole families that we knew. You know, we didn't have a canoe. We didn't have anything. We just had each other. So my job was, all right. She's the mom of the cerebral palsy cousin that I had. So. I'm going to let her stay here. You need to stay inside. I let her go out with me one time, but we went to the to the store around the corner and ran back because we can't leave my handicapped cousin for too long. We left her with a friend that lived next door. So after that, we started, I started leaving her home and going out every day and the things that I had to do, jumping. Now, in Louisiana, the men that stayed behind, the people that stayed behind, as far as city workers, city workers stayed behind to pump the water in the streets. That was their job. Some of them chose to stay behind. A lot of them chose to stay behind. Gas stations, we had one that was giving out gas. Most people's cars were flooded. So it was unsafe to use those. My cousin's car wasn't, so I was trying to get gas for her, but the line was like five miles long, maybe, maybe longer than that, a lot longer than that. It just was, it was impossible. So I'm going to get supplies, so some, some supplies from this pharmacy. And we're going to stay here. We're going to stay here in the house because we have no choice. We can't leave. They won't let us leave. They're not going to let us, nobody come in. So let's survive. So my neighbors told me to go to Rite Aid. I go to Rite Aid. The store is all blown in. Water's coming down from the ceiling. I'm thinking, okay, supplies. So I got a lighter. I got several lighters, which is the long ones that you like, like the stove or you like candles with. I got candles. I got water. I got pampers for my cousin. Um, um, whatever food that was non-perishable, bring it out. When I came out, there was an officer there. He was a racist cop standing there. And he told me to come on out the store. I came on out the store and I was scared to death because the last thing I need to do was go to jail. Um during this crisis. So he said, let me see the duffel bag. I was riding a bicycle at the time. And I got off, I, I, I saw my bike still out there. He, I gave him the duffel bag. He looked in the bag. He said, Is there, if there's anything else in this bag besides survival stuff, I'm taking you to jail. And when I opened the bag up for him, I was smoking cigarettes back then. My nerves were a wreck. So I had a whole carton of cigarettes. That was something that wasn't an essential item. I had a carton of cigarettes. He took that and just ran with it. That one carton of cigarettes ruined everything for me in his mind. So he just went crazy on me. Called me a black bitch. Called the backup. Backup came. He says, take that black bitch to jail. That's exactly what this white cop said. So I'm crying, I'm frantic, I'm thinking, Hella, my cut, my aunt Helen is waiting at me for me at the house. The family is waiting for me because I was the sole provider. I'm the one going out every day, jumping in these cars with these men, the city workers, jumping in the cars with them, letting them rub on my fucking thighs, which was disgusting. Them not knowing my tea, 
making them think that they're going to get some later on down the line. But please help me go get this food from the Red Cross truck for my family right now. And don't worry about it. I'll hook you up later. I would lie to them and tell them anything at that moment. I would trick and fool them anytime I, anything I had to do to bring food back to the house. Food, water, supplies, anything. So I did those things. I didn't do anything for them. I didn't have no sex for them. But if it came to that, I probably would have. Just so I can keep my family alive until the streets were pumped and everything. But thank God I didn't have to do that. But I had to let these old nasty men just grope me. So, um, I went to the female's jail. <laughs> that was interesting. They pull up. Um, I saw female's jail. I said, oh, shit. Shit's about to get really real right now for me. So. I get inside. I'm nervous. I'm scared. Because I know what's next. And it took all my information. And the next thing I know, they're like, alright, so this officer, this female officer is about to take you in the back. And she's going to search you. Long story short, I told her before I even let her search me. I was like, look, ma'am, there is something going on down there. And it's not what you think. So, um, um, if you, you know, just to let you know, when I pull off my clothes, that there's a little candy down there that is, you know, um, tucked away. So she says... Oh, <laughs> she went, oh, well, um, I'm going to have to let the, the, the male officer search you then. I was like, please, please, lady, please, please. I just want to go home. I said, my family live right down the block. Please just let me go. Oh, nope. I spent, they not only embarrassed and humiliated me that day, it was the worst 16 months of my life it traumatized the shit out of me when I went to prison they did not send me to the female side they sent me to the male's prisons and they sent me to several ones they sent me during the storm I don't know what was going on they was trying to make room in, in all these different places so I kept going further upstate further and further and further they kept moving me and every time they move you they don't tell you where you're going you just say they just say pack up and you get on a bus and you're standing on a line outside with a bunch of other inmates and you have no idea where you're going and them inmates that you're on the bus with are already telling you what's going to happen if you put in, if you're put in there with them or try to get in there with them is what they're telling me and whispering to me. And all I'm doing is crying and praying and I'm crying and praying and I'm asking God, please help me right now. Like back then, <laughs> I would, I'm praying to anybody, get me out of here. So I stayed in contact with my cousin. I wrote her letters constantly. I called her constantly and let her know where I was. She tried to get me out. Something happened with the lawyer. Um, he ran off with her money. So the lawyer never showed up. Never showed up. Every court date that I had, that man never showed up. Um, so that he just kept letting me sit in there and rot in there for a fucking carton of cigarettes and supplies to live on, which the mayor said was perfectly legal. <sighs> Listen, if I had to do that all over again, I would definitely do it because I know what it was like living in that moment. I know what it was like having niggas, men, walk around the house at night because they were breaking in other women's houses and raping them. They were raping them in the Superdome. Because they used the Superdome as the shelter. They was raping them. In the bathrooms in there. So when I was listening and hear them creeping around our house at night. Me and Helen, we grabbed our weapons, honey. And we started yelling like, come on. Y'all come on in here if you want to. So they knew not to come into our house. Living like that, living in that fear causes you terrible anxiety. It's a traumatic experience. Um, then going straight from that and into a prison and a male's prison of all places, you guys. <sighs> Listen. As horrible as it was for me, I haven't even told you 
the things that happened to me while I was in there. When you deny a guy, like I don't, I didn't know, I didn't know, I guess my place or what I was supposed to not say or do or the rules or whatever. So I had a mouth on me and I said a lot of shit, but I can fight. So I wasn't worried. Um, but at the same time, like I'm a tough chick, you know, I know how to take care of myself. At the same time, now these are big, brutally men. I can't fight these men. So, um, me rejecting them, sexual advances on me, I've been spit on in there. They threw feces and urine in my cell at me. It was horrible. Oh, I said that I would never tell this story. <clears throat> mm. In debt like this, in debt because it brings back some really horrible memories for me, you know? Um, back some really uh, <sighs> degrading ex you know memories for me but I I survived it <laughs> like I told you I'm a tough chick so I made it I made it out of there alive thank God but like I said <sighs> I'm putting it in a book, so it's very therapeutic for me to talk about it and write it out, you know, um, helps me to heal and get over it, so, uh, sorry about crying, you guys, about that, but that really, it, it puts me in a really, um, dark place in my mind, so, and every time I talk about it, I thought I was over it. This was 2005. Oh, God. I thought I was done crying about it. But it's like when I remember my prison experience, that part was scary. That was the worst. It was worse. And so, yeah. Having PTSD afterwards is definitely a given for anyone. Um, well, for me. And people who just couldn't mentally deal. But anyway, um... I'm going to stop that right there. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Um, and I like showing vulnerability to people on the internet. <laughs> um, I like to, my, my role always have been the one to be strong and to um, help other people. You know what I mean? So when other people are going through something, I always try to be this one that's strong. Like, lean on my shoulder. Let me, let me, let me console you. Let me comfort you. Like, so I don't really like to be the one that's vulnerable in sharing the feelings. It makes me feel a little weak in front of people. And that's when people think that they can take advantage of you. And nobody can take advantage of me. Mm -mm. <sighs> Um, but I will stop right there and I'm going to end that for now. I think I've been talking now. It says that I've been talking for 33 minutes and 59, 34 minutes. So I love you guys so much. Please subscribe, like, subscribe and like. Hit the subscribe button and let me come tomorrow because tomorrow is Friday and I have... Um, part two of the prison. Once I reached the prison, I want to talk to you about what happened to me um, in the prison. That was some experience, honey. Um, <laughs> from um, um, having feces and crap thrown on me to um, 
being forced to choose a husband. I didn't let the husband choose me. I had to be forced to choose mine because if I was a free agent, so to speak, running around that jail, you know, by myself and not knowing anybody really and in there a lot of stuff could have happened to me so I ran into a, this gay guy in the cafeteria on my first or second day there and he pretty much gave me the lowdown and what I need to do immediately he says before you start being passed around so I didn't want that to happen so I'm going to talk about all of that experience um, tomorrow that prison experience it's oof. It's something else. It's very interesting. Exciting? No. Interesting? Yes. Because so much happened, including guards. Two of them who wanted to have sex with me. Yeah. So, I will definitely tell you guys about it. I'm not afraid to tell you about it. I'm going to air it out. I love you so much. Please subscribe. Hit like. Subscribe. Let me tell you part three. Tomorrow will be... Wow, part two. I'll tell you the other half, part two. I love you. Talk to you tomorrow. Mwah.